Are you recording? Yes, that's what the show's about. No, I know. <laughs> I don't see. Okay, here. It says stop recording. That oh, means it means that it would it be is recording. recording. All right, gosh, this is so amazing. Hi, everybody. I am Mary Perry. <laughs> and I'm David Zen. And we are completely unscripted. <laughs> well, welcome back, Dave. We're so excited to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be back. <laughs> Excellent. Got so far. Um, anyway, it was an amazing trip. It was an amazing trip. Yep. Uh, everyone came back safe and sound. Excellent. Excellent. We saw a lot of southeastern Germany. Yep. <clears throat> which actually would have been West Germany and East Germany. Okay. Right. And uh, we had a great time at the Passion Play. Mm. That must have been is... magnificent. Was it a once in a lifetime <clears throat> deal, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's hard to describe. Uh, yeah. It was like five and a half hours long. Wow. You go for like two and a half hours and then you break for dinner. Yep. And then you come back and you have the conclusion. Wow. The only way to explain it is that it's kind of like <clears throat> a Palm Sunday gospel mm -hmm, where you're, mm -hmm, everyone's mm -hmm. reading apart. Yep. And it's like the Easter vigil. Okay. Where you get all the Old Testament readings. Yep. All combined into one. Wow. Plus a bunch of singers like an opera. Yep. And there you it's, go. it's really kind of amazing. That's very cool. That's very and cool. And 5,000 people watching it. Wow. Uh, because it's so long, they really they write a script for it. And you get a lot more insight into characters where you may have like one sentence about Judas portraying Jesus mm -hmm. in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you really get into his, they develop his um, relationship with Jesus and so with nice. Caiaphas and stuff. And the way they present uh, uh, Judas, it's more like Judas goes to Caiaphas and the high priest more to like, because he wants Jesus to explain his son. Not like he's trying to like turn him over to be yeah. killed. Yeah. Uh, and and he really feel when they go to pay him the money, he's like, I don't want this. You guys betrayed me. Mm -hmm. You didn't do what you said you were going to do. You mm -hmm. said you were going to mm -hmm. give him a chance to mm -hmm. speak. Wow, interesting. Uh, and then in the meantime, you have Caiaphas and Ananias and Herod and Pilate. They're like all going at each other. Yeah. I mean, it's just like this perfect storm that Jesus kind of walks into. And, wow. It's just not as kind of straightforward yeah. and simple as they yeah. present it yeah. in a couple of paragraphs in the gospel. Right. So, so that's very wow, that's amazing. Just, and I know a lot of people that were in our group <clears throat> will probably go back and read their their Bibles closer, especially the Old Testament stories, because mm -hmm. they were like, mm -hmm. "Why is the story of Abraham and Isaac? Why mm. did they drop this in? Oh. Right where they? Because what they they kind of did." Yeah. They put, uh, it started out going through the gospel and Holy Week and stuff. Yeah. But then at various points, they put in these little tableaus of the Old Testament stories. Wow. It's like, why did they insert that there? there okay, well, right. Because going to the Abraham and Isaac story, yeah. the reason they put that in there is because Abraham's about to give up his his only son, which is his promise to everything. Mm -hmm. And God is giving up his only son. Mm -hmm. uh, so That's you know, it, I think a lot of people are going to go back and read through the book. We got a little book with a script of the whole Wonderful. thing. Wonderful. Wow. And we learned a lot about Martin Luther, too. Wow. Yeah, you were tracking, tracking all his uh, tracks yeah. and I have a new, new appreciation for him. I always kind of thought of him as one kind of rogue priest that stood up to Rome, but... Yeah. I think he was much more than that, right? He was way more than that. Yeah. Uh, he was a priest. He was a monk. He was he was like a monk's monk. Yeah. Wow. Uh, much okay. more into... He was reading... He was reading the uh, the Bible when his superiors were telling him not to read the Bible. 
which is kind That's of remarkable. And he's like, I don't see any of this stuff, any of these doctrines in the Bible. Yeah. And just one thing that really struck me was we were at one place where he was a monk, a monastery where he served there for a while. And there was this one room, maybe a little size, a little bit bigger than the guild room here where they had they would have all the monks come in once a week on Friday and they would do public confessions. And they'd go around the room and everyone would give their confession. They would average two to five minutes. You know, and people would, they would confess what they'd done the week before. And one week Martin Luther went on for six hours. Oh my gosh. Wow. So that's so he was that aware of wow his thoughts and yeah and, and everything his he just his speech and he was like way beyond I just got the impression he was way beyond everyone else yeah. and this yeah. just wasn't yeah. some random guy no no plus there were some other people uh, that were in this with him and that yeah. supported him wow so fascinating well what I love about these trips is whether you have the privilege of going on them with you or not like everybody gets to live a little bit through it but both in your photographs, but then also in your stories afterwards. So we look forward to, uh, to you sharing your stories about this. It was a very different trip than, uh, than the It was uh, very different, yeah. Yeah. But food uh, looked you, amazing. Sites the food amazing. was amazing. Sites looked amazing. The, uh, the liquid beverages. Yeah, yeah, the the liquid adult amazing. beverages were amazing. They, I think they, some people really enjoyed them. Yes. So pleasure. No, I'm not going to say any names. No. Uh, Dumb journey, <laughs> <laughs> you guys know who you are. <laughs> there uh, you go. But no, but it was fun. good. It's I mean, we saw. Right? We went into uh, Berlin the last day, and we yeah. saw the some remains of the Berlin Wall. How powerful is that? We saw a check really Charlie. Good. We saw the Brandenburg Gate. Yeah. It was all good. Just think about that. That was not that long ago. That no. was in recent history. Mm. But that was how that was. Solved. And you can still see, wow. even in cities like Berlin, you can see where there's so much new construction mm -hmm. where, where it just areas wasn't. have been totally bombed out. Yeah, yeah. right, and just left. But there were still some old buildings. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, to a busy week at St. Paul's. We're so we're glad to have you and your travelers back. And hello, um, so what do we have going on this week? So well, tomorrow's so Sunday, right? Tomorrow's Sunday. Tara will be here, right? Tara will be Tara the, the preacher and celebrant. And we look forward to that. Yes, we do. And what else do we have this week? We have a vestry meeting on Wednesday. And we have... Bible studies for all. We have a big bonfire on Friday. We do. Tell we me what's do. That all about. Is it six o'clock? Six o'clock, right over here in the meadow. And bring a chair. Now, there might have been some confusion on the flyer. You don't have to bring a chair and a dessert to share. You can bring your own chair. You don't have to share your chair, right? And you commas bring, are important. Commas things. are a very important <laughs> thing. And you can uh, bring a dessert to share. So, dessert to share, yes. Chair to share, optional. I'm okay. just going to leave it optional. So join us. It'll be really fun. Super casual, super easy. We'll have some um, light um, acoustic worship music. Um, I think George is doing it, and uh, it's going to be really fun. So please come on out, hour and a half or so, and just dress warm, and it'll be great. That's super. Yeah, Friday night. So what else do we have going on? We have uh, something coming up at the end of the month, right? What's that, Trunk or Treat? Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat, yes. And that's always so fun. And if you haven't yet signed up to be a trunk, please do so. You just decorate it however you'd like. Come on out to the parking lot. And kids throughout the community, it's not just for St. Paul's kids, it's for St. Paul's kids, their friends, and the entire community far and wide. Um, they come they come through. And it's such a good time to really be an outreach event um, in Brookfield and surrounding areas. And they do come. And they do come. It's really fun. So all those details are in the sort of points. So flying for that, too. All right, so have you looked at the readings for this week? I, uh, no. You yeah. haven't? I have not. Okay. okay I'm sure you did. Well, yeah, I have What's going on it. this week? Well, the Old Testament <laughs> lesson is uh, actually one of my favorite stories. It's uh, from Second Kings. It's the story of uh, Naaman or Naaman, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. 
who was one of the, uh, he's the commander of the army in Syria, mm -hmm. and he is leprosy. Mm -hmm. And he's told that, uh, actually the slave to his mistress tells him that there's someone in Israel that can heal him of his uh, leprosy. So he writes a letter to the king of Israel and he's upset, he thinks he's trying to provoke a fight and uh, Elisha hears about it and he says, no, send him here. We'll prove to him that there's a uh, God is in Israel. Yeah. And uh, he comes and he expects that Elisha is going to come out of his house and magically yeah. wave his hand over him and yeah. heal him. And Elijah doesn't even come out of his house, he just sends a messenger. And he says, go to the Jordan River and wash seven times and you'll be healed. Well, for those of you that have been on Israel trips with us, you know what the uh, Jordan River looks like. It looks like a cup of coffee with some milk in it. Very muddy looking. It's like the last place you'd probably think of healing. to go to get healed. And he even says, you know, not the rivers of Damascus, uh, better than the waters of Israel. But his servants say, you know, if he had asked you, if he had given you something tough to do, you would have done it. Just go to the river and wash seven times. So he does, and his flesh is healed, and Amazing. He comes back and he says, now I know there's a God, in the, that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. So that's a great story. Right. And another gospel story is from Luke, Luke 17. This is another interesting story. It's the story of uh, 10 lepers calling out to Jesus. And uh, they say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Which I'm not sure, but I have heard that every time someone says to Jesus, have mercy on us, he like kind of stops and listens to him, hmm. pays attention. Hmm. It's not just their calling, he said, have yeah. mercy on us. So he tells them, go show yourself to the priests and, and then you'll be made, uh, you'll be healed, you'll be made clean. Yeah. But one of them comes back and gives them thanks. Who, who is told in the story is a uh, Samaritan. Mm -hmm. But what the story doesn't really go into is that one of the reasons the Samaritan comes back is because he doesn't have a priest to go to because um, he's not Jewish. He's so, not Jewish. Hmm. I mean, Jesus says, you know, we're not ten healed. Yeah. Well, the other nine may be doing what they were told is going to their priest. We don't know. Yep. But the one guy does, and uh, he says, get up, go on your way, your faith has made you well, so. I'd kind of like to hear someone talk more about yeah. both sides of that story, but yeah. I, I, some I good do, readings. It, oh, excellent. And I do love it that all the time when Jesus is doing those things, and then mo lots of times the words out of his mouth are, get up. You know, they're get up now, go out, right now, go out. Mm -hmm. Go out and, um, and he sometimes tell and sometimes don't tell, but it's never just, well, just hang around here, you'll be fine. And then it's Let's get up and go. So, I love that. Yeah, very good. Very good. So you have any closing stories? For this? Well, I have one more calendar announcement. Is that the, the uh, evangelism workshops, the last two Wednesdays oh, right. of, of October. Yes. So kind of on those lines, the segue here would be go out. So, and, you know, sometimes he did say, you know, your faith has made you well and, and share that story. And uh, so it's just a great way of really um, learning about evangelism, not like how to do it or how to print up tracts. That's not what we're going to be talking about, but really, really try to make it to um, both those workshops. It's going to be interactive. It's going to be really good as, for us as a community here. So there's information on that in, um, in uh, sword points and also in the bulletin. So please try to do that. So that'd be great. And... Um, I'm so glad that you guys came back right in the middle of fall, right? I mean, it, left, it was just starting fall, and then it was fall. And cue you the guys, fall jokes. Cue yeah. the fall jokes, like, big time. <laughs> and then did you, um, did you guys do a pumpkin yet? Did you cut up a pumpkin yet? No. No? Do you know how you heal or fix a cut pumpkin? No, you don't. I don't. I can see you don't. I, wait a minute. I bring a Wednesday morning to the healing service. You could do that. Yeah, I could. And you know what it would be? 
Well, I'm not going to go there. But <laughs> it would be healed because it's, A, it's at St. Paul's, which is a wonderful yes. healing oasis. And number two, you take it to a pumpkin patch. <laughs> Can't let the show end on that. No, I, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't, except for the Healing Oasis part, because that is absolutely yes, true. Come here, good. prayer, healing, Wednesdays, 10 o'clock. Okay. So one of the first days we were there, we were in uh, Munich. <clears throat> Cue <laughs> 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 the lead, leader housing joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in, okay, the, in the town square yes, in uh, Munich. Munich, they have the Tragedy. very famous uh, Lockenspiel. Uh huh. Yeah, in Marian Plot. In, right. Mm -hmm. You know what I've that means? Uh, isn't it Mary's? Mary Plaza. Mary Plaza. Yeah. You should know that. I know. I, I but, thought it was anyone going But to it's I was there once, a, once a day. It doesn't happen all the time, but once a day at five o'clock is when the thing goes through its like eight minutes long where the, all the characters come out and dance. Yeah. And that just happened to remind me of uh, the story. <laughs> Tell you. Okay, so you're familiar with the, the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yes. Okay. I can't even imagine that segue warming up for here, but go ahead. Well, <clears throat> there was a contestant on the show who had gotten all the way up to the end. We'll call her Deborah. Okay, Deborah. She had answered all the questions correctly. Yes. So if she gets the final question right, she wins a million dollars. Otherwise, she's stuck with just winning 25000 So she thought, you know, this question is not going to be a pushover. So the question is, which of the following species of birds does not build its own nest, but instead lays its eggs in the nests of other birds? The condor, the buzzard, the cuckoo, or the vulture. So she's really on the spot. She doesn't yeah. know the answer. She's, yeah. she's really kind of on the spot because yeah. she's already used her 50-50 lifeline. She already did the audience she's poll lifeline. She's in a chair. All that she's got left is her phone a friend lifeline. And she really hoped she wasn't going to get in this position because her friend was a really good friend, but she lacked some common sense, and at the time she didn't make the decision. So um, she's thinking, you know, if I call my friend, mm, I'm probably going to have to do the opposite of mm, what she tells me. Oh, yeah. So she calls her friend, and her friend says, without hesitation, that's easy. It's the cuckoo. Huh? Did I mention that the friend was born too? <laughs> Didn't need to be said. So Deborah has a decision to make. Not yeah. approved. Yeah, <laughs> so she doesn't know what to do. She's getting pressed by the host to make an answer. Yep. Crossing her fingers, Deborah says, the cuckoo. Is that your final answer? Yes, that's my final answer, the cuckoo. Absolutely correct. The balloons come down, what? the lights are going off, everyone's jumping up and down. She wins a million dollars. What? So three days later, Deborah's having a big party for her family and her friends. And uh, her friend comes to the, uh, the party. And she said, Jenny, I don't know how to thank you. How did you happen to know the right answer? The friend says, come on. Everyone knows the cuckoos don't build nests. They live in clocks. Oh, wow. All right. Pumpkin patch. <laughs> That's All our right. big news for today. All right. <laughs> we will see you when we see you. Hopefully tomorrow. Bye, guys. Have a great week, everyone. Peace out. Love you.